Invasion, a brand new series on Nat Geo Wild. Australia, India, Africa, North America. Millions travel to these destinations every year and there are countless reasons to visit. But we are giving you 12 good reasons not to go. The Deadly Dozen. From the man-eating great white in Australia, to the native-eating African lion, to tourist-consuming grizzly bears in North America. 12 deadly reasons to stay at home. The Deadly Dozen. Only on Nat Geo Wild. To get a detailed study of what was going on, NASA installed a global positioning system to monitor the elevation of the glaciers and track their loss of volume. What they discovered blew them away. Glaciers were melting faster than ever before. They were literally sliding into the sea. Over the last few years, when we had the extreme warm temperature, the ice sheet actually accelerated not only 10, 20 percent, but 50, 80 percent. In the summer of 1985, the glacier was moving toward the sea at just over four miles per year. By the summer of 2003, it was nearly eight miles per year. It was clear that the process was accelerating the glaciers were moving faster toward the sea. The reason was simple physics and the effect of meltwater. If you place a block of ice on a dry surface, the ice will move very slowly or not at all. But once the ice starts to melt, water gets between the ice and the surface, lubricating it the ice is able to move much faster. This is exactly what was happening in Greenland. Warmer average temperatures were causing the top and edges of the glaciers to melt. Large pools of meltwater formed on the surface. But glaciers have huge cracks and channels within them. The meltwater drained down through these cracks to collect beneath the glacier. Here, it lubricated the junction between the glacier and the earth, reducing the friction holding it in place and causing it to slide ever faster toward the sea. This is very bad news. This is enormous, doubling the speed of ice loss. Stefan believes that this acceleration of the glaciers sliding to the sea has catastrophic implications for us all. The sea level rise we have known for the last decade was close to half an inch. And this increase has doubled over the last five to ten years. If it is continuing this doubling every ten years, we would affect a lot of the coastline around the world within the next 100 years. If Greenland melts completely, it will release enough water to raise all the world's oceans by 23 feet. Until recently, scientists thought that was as bad as it could get. They were wrong. Greenland holds a lot of ice, but this isn't the only ice on the planet. Here, there are half a million cubic miles of ice. But Antarctica, the huge continent capping the Earth's South Pole, holds 11 times more. Scientists used to think that was no problem. The vast Antarctic ice sheets had a mass balance that worked. Antarctica is huge, mountainous, and cold. It should guarantee enough snowfall at the glacier's heads to balance out the melting at their bases. That's the theory, and that's how it's been for the last 10,000 years. Then in 2002 came evidence that the balance had changed. In just three weeks, a 1,250 square mile chunk broke away and vanished. There is now little doubt. The Antarctic meltdown has begun. The present Antarctic ice sheet accounts for 90% of Earth's total ice volume and 70% of its fresh water. 
It holds enough water to raise global sea level between 150 and 200 feet if completely melted. Until recently, we thought it was stable, but new satellite imaging technology is revolutionizing our understanding of our planet's vast ice caps and is teaching us that our world is not as stable as it seems. From hundreds of miles above the ice wastes of Antarctica, satellite data shows us something we thought was impossible. We believed the Antarctic ice was completely secure, but new research shows that it's breaking apart. Professor Eric Reno from NASA's Jet Propulsion Laboratory uses satellites to monitor the movement of glaciers of Antarctica with inch-perfect accuracy. The senior people in my community, when they were going to the field in Antarctica in the 50s or 60s, didn't even know where the glaciers were. In 2002, the new satellite surveys dramatically prove their worth. This is, or rather was, Larsen B, an ice sheet covering 1,250 square miles. It sat here for the last 10,000 years. Then, over a period of three weeks in early 2002, satellites watched as it completely vanished. Meltwater was again the culprit. But instead of lubricating the glacier, speeding its passage toward the sea, like in Greenland, this time, it literally split the ice shelf apart. Again, it was simple physics. When water freezes, its volume expands by 9%. Place a sealed glass bottle inside a freezer. It will shatter because of the pressure of the expanding frozen water inside. In Antarctica, it was this expansion that was doing the damage. Air temperatures in Antarctica are increasing three times faster than anywhere else in the world. This increase in temperature melts the surface and edge of the glaciers. Meltwater builds up and then seeps down into cracks and crevices inside the glacier or ice sheet. But unlike the Greenland glaciers, these cracks don't go all the way down to the rock below. Because it can't drain away, the meltwater builds up within the cracks, freezes, and then expands. The crevices are forced apart, and the glacier breaks up and slips into the sea. And as a result, we saw a large fraction of Larsen B literally explode in three weeks from uh, a series of very warm summers. It was quite a, an amazing event because this ice shelf had been around for 10,000 years. Larsen B's disappearance triggered an even bigger problem. Now, the land-based glaciers dammed up behind it had nothing to prevent them from flowing down into the sea and melting. These glaciers over here are sped up by a factor eight. They flow eight times faster now than prior to uh, the collapse of Larsen B. The ice sheets are also being attacked from below. Over the last 50 years, the temperature of the sea around Antarctica has risen by over a degree. This warmer water circulates under the ice at the edge of the glacier and into cavities deep beneath the surface. Water conducts heat 25 times more efficiently than air. The warmer water melts the base of the ice sheet at a rate of 162 feet a year. As their foundations melt, the glacier's ice breaks off and floats out into the ocean. The combination of these two processes, the cracking and the deep ice melting, is breaking up the sea ice. The huge western Antarctic ice pack is becoming more and more unstable. Reno has calculated that the Antarctic currently dumps 26 cubic miles of ice into the ocean each year. Antarctica holds uh, enough ice to raise sea level by about 150 feet. We don't know how long ago it started to get warmer, but it's too warm for the ice shelves to survive, and the glaciers are accelerating. As recently as 2001, scientists predicted the Antarctic ice sheets would remain stable throughout this century. Thanks to these astonishing images, we now know the truth. Antarctica is a disaster in the making. As an observer, I say, well, you should not panic 